Hello, I'm Jane Dutton with a wrap of the week's news. This is Eyewitness News. Justice and Constitutional Development Minister Tembi Similani says she did not have an improper relationship with a VBS fixer. We'll get to that, but first, South Africa's Kwaito star Mapa Putsi, best known for the song Izinja, has died. Real name Sandile Nguenya died on Thursday night. And a stunning strike against corruption in an undercover operation. At least 11 traffic officers were detained in Polokwane today. The Road Traffic Management Anti-Corruption Unit and the South African Police Service nabbed them on suspicion of accepting bribes from drivers, taxi drivers and bus operators who operated on the N1 highway between Polokwane and Musina. Back to the Justice Minister, Similani has told Parliament's Justice Committee that her more than 500,000 rand loan from Gundo Wealth Solutions linked to VBS while she was Polokwane mayor was paid back in full. The loan was used to purchase a coffee shop in Santon. But MPs have questioned the loan, with some calling for her to provide the written agreement. Former State President Thabo Mbeki has made explosive claims suggesting the deadly 2008 xenophobic attacks in Alexandra, Johannesburg were part of a planned operation to drive Zimbabweans back home to vote out Robert Mugabe. He says there is an intelligence report which he was privy to that lists the people and the motives behind the attacks. There's a mistake we made uh, as government and not to disclassify an intelligence document about what happened in Alexander 2008. That thing was organized to, to drive the Zimbabweans out of the country back to Zimbabwe because there were elections in Zimbabwe. It was people who were being driven out, they were going to vote against Bob Mugabe. Then. An intelligence report which has got the names and the dates and venues where people was, we met and planned this and so on. It's presented as a xenophobic attack by the people of Alex against it. It was wrong. It was organized, systematic for a political purpose. Basic Education Minister Saviwe Guahube and Sports, Arts and Culture Minister Gaten McKenzie have signed a memorandum of understanding to make this a reality. They're appealing to the private sector to help unearth more talented youths to showcase on the world stage. This is inspired by the Olympic performance of matriculant Bayanda Walaza. We are bringing back school sport in arts, in culture, in the school. And we want to make sure that our children, that finances are not the reason. Mm. Lack of finances are not the reason why they don't become Olympians. Mm. We want to make sure that our children get the same opportunities, whether they're in Mount Frey or whether they're in Sanders, they should get the same opportunities. President Cyril Ramaphosa is back home after a trip to China, aimed at making South Africa a more attractive investment. He's promised to make it easier to do business here. Since South Africa's investment drive in 2018, Chinese companies have made investment pledges to the value of over 18 billion rand in the manufacturing, resources, finance and agro-processing sectors. Ramaphosa says an intensified investment drive requires an ambitious move to modernize the country's infrastructure through the expansion of ports, rail and road networks. So South Africa in many ways becomes more attractive, more attractive in the sense that the reforms that we've embarked upon are going to speed up. They are going to be much deeper and much more meaningful and create a much clearer conducive climate and environment for businesses to invest. We saw the extraordinary story of Chico Twala accusing both his sons of theft and laying charges against them. After his father laid those charges, Longwe says he's afraid to go home. On Wednesday, the 36-year-old appeared briefly before the Randburg Magistrates Court in Johannesburg after he was arrested on Monday. The state dropped its case against Twala's younger son, Selo, citing a lack of evidence as the reason. His father alleges that Longwe and his brother Selo stole valuable recording equipment from his home. 
taking him to the airport more than 30 times. I did everything I could, like I indicated. Before I left for the U.S., I sat him down, spoke to him, said, you're under pressure, everyone thinks you did this with sins and all that. Prove yourself, here's an opportunity. Here's a studio, new equipment, start working. You're a sound engineer. The man, it went in there, Zafuma up. So what must I do? Going over to the UK, a landmark report into a residential building fire where 72 people died in London has found that the incident could have been avoided. The 1,700 pages report was released this week, seven years since the Grenfell Tower fire. Grenfell Inquiry Chair Martin Moorbeck has published his final findings into how London came to be in such a deadly state. There was a failure on the part of the government and others to give proper consideration at an early stage to the dangers of using combustible materials in the walls of high-rise buildings. We discovered that there had been systematic, systematic dishonesty on the part of manufacturers involving deliberate manipulation of the testing processes. So before you buy your T-shirts ahead of the match tomorrow between the box and the All Blacks, listen to this. Deceptive Facebook ads linked to websites claiming to be, quote, official, using fake certifications and even warning shoppers about counterfeit sites to add an air of legitimacy. According to the genuine South African rugby online shop, official Nike Springboks products will never be offered at steep discounts or as part of, quote, buy one, get one free promotions. The Springboks are one win away from winning their first rugby championship title in five years. They could do it as early as tomorrow evening when they play New Zealand in Cape Town. A victory for the world champions while denying the All Blacks any bonus points would see them confirmed as the winners of the Southern Hemisphere tournament for the first time since 2019 and with two rounds of matches still left to play. SA coach Rassi Erasmus has reverted to his tried and trusted combinations by bringing back Vili LaRue and Andre Pollard to start as he made seven changes to the side that won at Ellis Park last weekend, while captain Siakolisi has been cleared to play after suffering a facial fracture a week ago. The box haven't beaten their arch rivals in the mother city since 2005, but with 19 World Cup winners in their match day 23, they'll be the favourites for this encounter. Kickoff is at 5pm. Mawande Mateza, Eyewitness News Sport. That's it from me. I hope you enjoy the match tomorrow. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.